Opening up the mailbag, what happens if Lonnie Walker actually goes to the G League? A ton of Christoph Porzingis questions, Sam Cassell's future, and a four-point shot? It's all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thank the block but the bread. It's holiday season drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT, no, we not on the next. Flush a competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and big Zeus still be town's finest. Been a race team going up in the rappers. Watch the seeds gain in locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from Dean White on the breakdown. John on the mic document and domination. Matter pen of back bay, it's all seeds nation. Rain and Jay's how we started raising business. How we finish locked on. Celtics pod, home of the winners. Peace. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I got you covered Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Actually, this week might be four. I got a special guest lined up. It might turn into two podcasts. You're going to want to stick around for the end of the week. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcast. Watch the show on YouTube. Get into the comment section. Make sure the notifications are turned on. Because later on in the week, it's going to be a podcast. I feel really good saying you're going to want to listen. And I think it might be in two parts. So check that out. I'm John Corrales. If you're new to the show, I've been covering this team for nearly 20 years. I'm a beat writer covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I've written a couple of books about the Celtics. One's called Built Different, Celebrating the Celtics Championship. So go check that out. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. Use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase of those last minute tickets. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. We're opening up the mailbag today. Later on, we'll have some fun with a four point shot. We'll talk about Sam Cassell, a bunch of Kristaps Porzingis stuff. But let's go to the question. Uh, the question from Todd. All of these questions come in via my website, slash mailbag johncorrales.com slash mailbag. That's how you submit questions. That's where they get answered. Todd suggests that Lonnie Walker can be brought up to take up a 15th roster spot, spend some time in the G League, and then compete with maybe a Jaden Springer or something like that. It, it The concept here is interesting because last week, obviously I did the bonus podcast when it came to uh, Lonnie Walker being signed uh, nothing official, official yet, but Lonnie Walker uh, going to be joining the team on what's known as an Exhibit 10 contract, which is a one-year non-guaranteed deal. We call it a training camp deal uh, because it's completely non-guaranteed, and typically it's used for guys to come in, get cut, go to the G League where you get an extra $75,000. You can go do that and then come up. It's incentive. Uh, you you want to you don't want to miss out on that $75,000. So you stick with your team. And then uh, when you've earned that 75,000, a, a team comes calling and you go to whatever NBA team that, that might want to come and pluck you out of the G league system. It happens all the time, but Lonnie Walker is a bigger name. It's possible, right? Latin. I, I, I did the, the podcast last week and we'll do another one. Cause I want to kind of examine everybody's examining the, the fit, the where, where the, what kind of minutes would he get? Where in the rotation would he be? And so on and so forth. So we'll take another close look at that. But it is possible that he is indeed in Boston to get cut and go to the G League. I would be shocked that that if that's the case, but an Exhibit 10 contract does suggest that that's a possibility. So Walker could be coming in for that specific purpose to work on whatever he needs to work on, learn the system. Maybe it's a simple, take the extra money, go to Maine, learn the system while we save money on not paying you for the first couple of months. And then later on, we will sign you to that 15th roster spot. You come in and then you become part of the rotation. That is a, a viable path. It is not the path I expect. I expect him to come in, compete for a spot, and hopefully challenge, make make the decision a little tough for, for Joe Missoula. I think ultimately it boils down to, is Lonnie Walker willing to not play? It's the, it's the Brad Stevens line. 
if Lonnie Walker is willing to not play certain games, if he understands the assignment, just like O'Shea Brissett understood it, just like Svi Mikhailuk understood it, just like all of these other guys understood it, are you willing to not play certain games? Are you going to be okay with that? We understand that you have future contract in mind. We're going to work together on this. This is the Celtics talking to Lonnie Walker. We'll work together on it with you. You give us the rah-rah on days where you're a DNP. You'll get the minutes, and we will spread the word throughout the league. Man, this guy, Lonnie Walker, top-notch team guy, definitely a guy you want to bring on. If he had more opportunity, definitely will, will make an impact for your team. We'll help you get your next contract. That's something that I think is is most likely for him and the Celtics. So it he may he may go to the G League. He may give the Celtics a, a few months of not paying taxes on his salary. But honestly, at this point, in for a dime, in for a dollar. The, the Celtics are already massively expensive. I don't think the extra, whatever it is with Lonnie Walker at this point, what does it matter? So my feeling is Walker comes in, he competes, probably wins an opportunity. I expect him to be good enough to at least be part of the rotation with injuries and minutes, uh, restrictions on, I expect holiday maybe Tatum and Brown, at least when I say restrictions, limits, right? Like 34 minutes a game for Tatum and Brown, not 38. So there's eight minutes there that somebody can take, uh, 30 minutes for holiday or maybe in the twenties. So there's four, six, eight minutes that somebody can take. I expect Walker to be in competition for those minutes as they slowly ramp up to, he gives the Celtics that, that I guess, uh, quality player that makes them feel better about limiting the guys that they've had. And then slowly, slowly bringing them up to a point where everybody can feel comfortable about, uh, where they're going to be health wise in the future. So not expecting Lonnie Walker to go to the G League. Joe starts the cavalcade of Porzingis questions. We'll go with, um, is keeping Horford, uh, uh, I'm sorry, my opinion is Cornette should dust off his three ball and be plugged in the starting lineup, keeping Horford off the bench and his minutes low. Do you think Cornette should turn back into a stretch five this upcoming season? And should he be a starter? He will naturally be a starter in games and back-to-back games. The Celtics have a few before Porzingis will return. So he will get some starts. Can he turn back into a stretch five? His numbers as a stretch five dropped off uh, significantly over time. There's a reason why he kind of faded as a, a stretch big. Because you look over the course of his career, at the beginning, he was in New York, 35.5%, a little over 36%. And then he goes to Chicago and shoots 28.7%, then 25.4%, then 26.1%, then 25%. So he's got four solid seasons as a 25, 26% three-point shooter. Could he get back to shooting? And making, like he, he's got a decent looking jumper, decent enough. Could he be encouraged to come in and be more of a stretch five? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Joe looked at, at uh, Cornette and said, you're going to have an opportunity to start some of these games. And, or play a, a fair amount of minutes. Why not perfect that shot? Go home. Your homework for the summer is fix this shot. And if you can fix this shot, 
then maybe you you have a, a role. I think history tells us that the three point shot is not something that they've they've wanted for him, that they need from him. But if the opportunity presents itself and he can take it with confidence, then I'm sure Missoula would be like, yeah, go for it. But you got to take it with confidence. So is it something that they're coming into this season saying, all right, we're hoping that Cornette turns into a stretch five? No, no, I don't think so. If he does, if he shows a reliable sh jumper and he can prove it in camp and prove it in the preseason, all right, fine, fine. Boston will never turn down a stretch big, but also he was very effective not shooting that shot. He was very effective being a role man and catching lobs and and just being a facilitator and, and just playing a very limited role. They don't need him to take a ton of shots. So I would say it's less likely. I don't think it's very likely that he's going to turn back into a stretch five, but if he comes into camp and proves it, then they will, they will take full advantage of it. So that was a, a Porzingis question by proxy. Uh, a Porzingis question about what role he's going to take is coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. I just used Game Time to go to a Red Sox game. They got two hit. It was not the best Red Sox game, but it was a great experience for me and my family because I know we got the best price. They have curated deals on Game Time for not just sports, but comedy, uh, theater, concerts, all that stuff. So go check it out. Download the Game Time app. Use the code LOCKDOWNNBA. You're going to get $20 off your first purchase. It's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You get great deals on great seats. You can see the view from your seat on your phone before you buy it. You toggle all in pricing and you'll see the final price before you decide, yes, I want that ticket. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. You can return your tickets within 24 hours of your purchase for a full credit to your game time account. No question questions asked. And last minute deals on tickets right up until the start of the event, sometimes even a half hour to an hour after it starts. So maybe a comedy show where they have opening acts that you're not so sure about. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download that app, create an account, use the code Lockdown NBA, get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Lockdown NBA, Lockdown, L O C K E D, on NBA for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Lockdown NBA. Make that your second listen. It's me, Jake Madison, on Wednesdays. So check us out. But it's rotating hosts all week long covering the league, the whole league, every big story, every big storyline, every debate, all of that stuff, all week long. So go check it out. It's a fun show. I'm glad to be part of it. Uh, let's get back to the mailbag here. Again, mailbag uh, questions go to johncorrales.com slash mailbag. Kevin from LA used that to say, are you going to ask Joe Mazzula if Chris Stops is willing to come off the bench after Christmas and the rest of the season before the 2025 playoffs as he rehabs from his injury? I mean, I, I wasn't uh, sure what I was going to ask Joe Mazzula yet, but I can, and should he, will he, I don't know. It's there's, there's value on either side. I think the Celtics had something specific in mind when he did that, uh, against the, the Mavs. Uh, I think that was more a matchup thing and, and also, you know, they knew how hurt he was. Uh, but look, he, he could come off the bench. I think they'll probably roll with him as a starter at some point. Maybe when he comes back initially, he comes off the bench. Uh, but I've, I've always been the type that likes to get the rehabbing guys in the starting lineup. Uh, you know, and, and by that time, Porzingis will have rehabbed. We, we say rehab. He, he'll, he'll be ready to play. He'll be, he'll be, He'll be winded is the, the only thing. I want a guy to come in, go through his warm-ups, go through the intros, 
stay loose, get that sweat going in the warmups and keep warm and come on in, especially for somebody like Porzingis. I want him to stay loose and limber. And then if it's short stints, fine, short stints. Just because you start somebody doesn't mean he has to play eight, nine minutes. He can come in and play four, sit down for two, come back in and play another four. That That's a different, uh, it, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter what minutes distribution he gets. If he starts, if he, if he comes off the bench, I like guys being warm. That's my personal philosophy. Uh, but they have the bike, they have trainers. The guy can get up and go, you know, into the tunnel right by the bench. They know that, Hey, at the, uh, eight minute mark, we're going to sub you in for Al Horford. So at the nine minute mark, Porzingis can get up, walk down the tunnel, get loose, get Limburg, have a coach kind of work with him. And then they can just yell down, Hey, he's ready. Like, okay, go get in there, get in for Al. And it's still, it's still fine. So it doesn't matter if he's willing to come off the bench or not willing. I think he's willing to do whatever the team wants. He just won a championship. I think he's pretty happy. He's got his money. I don't think it's going to be anything like crazy with him in his role. Uh, it's just a matter of how the Celtics feel they want to proceed. Do they do they like the starting lineup with Al Horford because it's been two months? They're like, we're just going to roll with this because we like it. Maybe they don't like the starting lineup with Al Horford because he's 39 and they want something, even though Porzingis is working his way back. They just say, this is going to be our, our playoff starting lineup. It's a starting lineup that worked pretty damn well. So. It, it again. It just doesn't matter what Porzingis is. Like, he's not. He's not going to sit there and be like, "You have to start me." I don't think he's that type of guy. Jaden gives us a couple of Porzingis type questions uh, moving forward. So I'm going to mold these into one type of bigger question. Uh, he says, "What if the Celtics win the next two championships? So three in a row. How long do you think it will take?" For them to break apart the players, uh, or will they keep it going? And what do you think the Celtics can get from sending Drew and KP and other players when the championship run is up? So if the Celtics win, I, I think if they win three in a row, everyone will be fine with whatever is next. Um, I don't think they're going to keep pushing it forward. Cause that means they're going to have to re-sign, uh, I think Porzingis and, uh, holiday. So I, I just don't think that's viable, right? Like, I don't know what the new ownership structure is going to actually be like. So it kind of depends on them as well. Maybe something changes around the league, maybe expansion gives the team enough money where they think like, no, we're going to roll with it one more time. We have to understand that after this season, if they run it back again for a third time, let's just say they, they won two in a row, right? Best case scenario, they've won two in a row and they're going for a third. That team is going to be I think the most expensive team in NBA history or right there with it. If you take that and run it one more year after that, it'll blow the records out of the water and it becomes kind of like not worth it to try it again. And at that point, I mean, Al's probably gone at that point. Um, holidays in his later part of his, his 30s, uh, 36, 37, Porzingis, who knows where he is injury wise. So I don't think this window, regardless of what happens lasts beyond three years. And if the Celtics win three in a row, oh my God, that is, it's not going to be on par with the 60s Celtics and winning eight, but in, it's almost like inflation adjusted in a reverse way <laughs> three championships in a row in this economy it's unheard of it's just unheard of 
You won't see three in a row for forever. It's three Pete in this financial uh, situation is you got to catch lightning in a bottle. If they do it, then congratulations, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. We're, we're going to go a different direction. Now, what can they get if, if holiday and Porzingis are the guys that go, I, I actually don't think they're getting anything. The whole reason those guys go is to save money. I think those guys just walk. And I think that's something we got to get, get ready for. If it's a trade, it's going to be, I think a trade into cap space. So one of the teams out there that needs to spend money that has 40 million in cap space, they'll take Porzingis or they'll take holiday and it might take a pick. It might take some, some kind of incentive to unload, or they might just say at that point, depending on where they are in this whole process, might be like holiday's contract is up. Porzingis's contract is up. Hey, let's, let's talk new contract, but it's not going to be very much. And, and Hey, I'm, I'm not going to rule out the possibility that the guys do come back on mid-level money, less than mid-level money, maybe below market, maybe holidays. Like, you know, I love Boston. I don't want to go. I don't want to do this anymore. My kids are here. Everybody loves it here. I got a couple years left. Yeah. 5 million a year. Fine. Whatever. Like if that's how it goes, then then maybe they do keep a couple of these guys. But bottom line is what you get for those guys is savings, financial savings. And if they come back, it's on a deep, deep discount, a much, much smaller contract, or they leave and sign contracts somewhere else. And the Celtics will have to move forward with whichever guys they decide to keep. I assume it's Jalen and Jason probably Derek white. Those are the three. Those are my three priority guys to keep from this core. We'll come back. Sam Cassell, a four point shot. The mailbag continues in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by better help. I have benefited from therapy. I think a lot of people can talking through issues, whether it's just daily stress or something with a relationship or something family related, you can benefit from talking through some of that stuff with a licensed therapist, which you can find on BetterHelp. You don't have to go traveling around to see what offices exist around your area, around your work. It's all online. So it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You go to betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. You will get 10% off your first month, but you sign up you fill out a quick questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist. If you click, great. If you don't, switch. No extra charge. And you can keep doing that until you find somebody. Once you click, therapy is actually kind of a joy because you will get, I think, a great feeling out of talking through whatever it is that you need to talk through. Try it at betterhelp.com slash MBA. Again, you're going to get 10% off your first month. Give it a shot. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on NBA. Let's get back to the mailbag. We'll finish it off. Mailbag questions come in to johncorrales.com slash mailbag. Andrew used it to ask, has Sam Cassell gotten any job offers from college teams? Not that I've seen, not that I've heard of. I don't think he's entertaining any college jobs. I think he wants to be an NBA head coach and he's working his way towards that. Uh, I do know that Milwaukee had interest in bringing him in on a significant deal. Other teams have brought, have, have had interest in bringing him in on a significant deal, but the Celtics have made it a priority to keep him. They've promoted him. He is the associate head coach, um, or whatever, um, the exact title is with uh, Joe Missoula and that's the, they, they made it a priority to keep him around. So uh, after this season, I don't know what he will want to do or pursue, but 
he he does want to be an NBA head coach. So we'll see how well that goes. Let's get to some fun questions. Paul, Paul is from Haiti. I said, if you didn't cover the Celtics, which team would you support? So let's just say I, I have retired and I don't cover the Celtics. Let's just say I've been banned from rooting for the Celtics. I, I'll be honest with you. I, at, at my age in my fifties now, and because I have to remain impartial, right? Like I, I grew up in the new England area. I definitely grew up watching the Celtics and, you know, there's always a piece of me that is, has those fond memories. But as I've said a million times, and I will continue to repeat it, my loyalty is to the game of basketball. And, and I've, I've been that way for so long that if I had the opportunity to be a free agent, I think I would just remain a free agent. I don't think I would root for anybody. Honestly, I think I would just like to watch interesting teams and watch good basketball, watch interesting players, good players. And if I had the means, travel to games that I thought were interesting and go catch a Nuggets Timberwolves game just because like, yeah, I want to go watch more Jokic. I want to see, I want to see that matchup again. You know, maybe I just want to go see uh, a a San Antonio OKC game and watch in person Chet versus Wimby. I think that's where I would go with it. Uh, So yeah, it's, it's, it's been interesting. And I think maybe I'm just unique. I, my love of basketball, I think has transcended rooting for a specific team. So for example, I was watching the uh, Indiana fever and the Dallas wings. And that was an incredible WNBA game. Just an incredible game scoring shot, making ball movement cuts, just incredible individual skill, um, team basketball. And I appreciate that. Like I love, and it's not the NBA. It's not the, the, you know, you're not going to have Jalen Brown type plays where Jalen just crosses somebody over, comes and dunks on somebody. That's not going to happen in the WNBA, but what is going to happen is you're going to have incredible team basketball with players setting picks for one another, back cutting. And if you get somebody like Caitlin Clark passing the ball, you just hit a cutter for a great, it's just beautiful team basketball. It's a different style. It's a different brand. And I love it. And I think given the opportunity to just not have to write and talk about basketball, I would just go enjoy the hell out of whatever basketball I could. Finally, uh, Wowie Vidal from Philippines. This is like international uh, section here. Shout out to the international viewers, listeners. Uh, Super cool. I always say I have a deep appreciation for you guys uh, because, and now, I mean, Haiti's in this this time zone, but you, you still have to jump through hoops, right? The Philippines is not in this time zone and you have to jump through hoops to try to watch these games. So I always appreciate y'all. And <laughs> I made a joke the other day about well, people not watching till the end. Like nobody watches this part. I specifically saved this one for last because it's a fun question. And also while wow, he says, I do watch this, these videos until the end. Since they're playing around with a four point shot here in the Philippines. Personally, I think it's a joke, but fans here seem to like it. What do you think? I, I don't like the four point shot idea unless, I mean, how far away is it? Is it 30 feet away? Okay. Uh, Maybe personally, I don't think we need the four point shot. I think it's, it's a gimmick and it, I'm sure, I'm sure people are like really into this idea of a four point shot. Uh, because all of a sudden 
you know, a, a seven point game with 30 seconds to go is still a two possession game. If you hit a four pointer, now you need a three to tie and a four to win. Makes things interesting. I will stick to my three point plan where I want the corner three to go away. I think the corner three is too easy. I think it's given too many guys, too many opportunities to stick around in the league where they probably should be done and move on and have somebody else get a shot. That shot has become too easy. It's too close for a shot to be uh, a two-pointer mid-range shot uh, at the top of the key, but a three-pointer on the side. I I don't like that. I just don't like that because the three is so much more valuable. So I want the curve of the court to just continue instead of breaking down, just continue to the end, or you can do like a little straight line or something if you want to make it so there's no little unusable space in the however you want to do that. But the the arc of this the 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 top of the key should just keep going. And if you want to move that back a foot. I'm fine with that too. Make the three valuable. Make the three something that specialists can do. And yeah, it taking the corner three away messes with the spacing, but teams will figure it out. Somebody will figure it out. I don't like the the retort that, oh, the corner th- you take away the corner three and the spacing gets all messed up. You know, the teams played forever without taking those corner threes. That is a relatively recent phenomenon. They figured out the spacing. They figured out how to score. Everybody in the NBA is super, super smart. They will figure it out. Defenses will adjust. Offenses will adjust. They always do. So I don't need four pointers. Move the line a little bit back. Take away the corner, the corner three pointer. Make the three pointer as like, make the three really be worth more than two. And make it so only a few people can hit that shot. And the rest has to be like picks and cuts and team basketball again. That that's what I want to see. It probably won't happen, but that's what I want to see. I also want to see you submit your questions for future mailbags. Johncorrales.com slash mailbag. Johncorrales.com slash mailbag. Appreciate everybody who submitted their questions. Uh, Again, stick around later this week. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet because we haven't recorded and I just want to, uh, I don't want to get people's hopes up if something falls through, but I can tell you the plan is to have a very significant guest on the show Thursday, uh, possibly Thursday and Friday. It's still a little fluid there, but you're going to want to subscribe. If you haven't yet, you're going to want to get notified when this show drops you're going to want to ring that bell on YouTube so when this sh- when that show drops or multiple shows drop you're going to be like you're going to look at your phone and be like oh oh okay so trust me on that so make sure you do that and i would love it if you shared the podcast tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the lockdown celtics podcast here on the lockdown podcast network it's your team every day